Motion pictures that went beyond flip books were developed in the 1890s, when film became sensitive enough to expose several pictures per second. The first public screenings were held in 1895. As visual storytelling wasn't invented yet, only mundane, everyday scenes were depicted and running times were generally under a minute. So, for about a decade, motion pictures were seen just as a curiosity. The Pate brothers were already active in media production since 1896, when in 1907 they convinced the Lumiere brothers that motion pictures were just a fad and bought their patents for film cameras and projectors for a ridiculously low amount. Consequently, the Lumiere brothers were never heard of again and by 1910 Pate Frère had become a worldwide media conglomerate still in existence today. It was in 1910 that Patti Freya decided to bring cinema into the home. That was a big deal, because film was made from celluloid, which contained nitrocellulose, also known as flash cotton or gun cotton, which replaced black powder in firearms, because it was six times more efficient. Yes, that's what film was made out of. While it was dangerous to handle at any time, Decaying celluloid film stock tends to spontaneously self-ignite or even explode. That is especially bad because the compound contains oxygen. So burning celluloid film cannot be extinguished by water or the removal of air. Therefore, Pate Frère developed a non-flammable safety film for home use and a movie projector to go along with it. The new 28mm film was made deliberately incompatible with 35mm film for safety reasons and, of course, commercial ones of the protectionist kind. The projector was called the Pate Cock, connecting the name to the company logo. It was the first home cinema projector. The crank handle drove not only the mechanism, but also a dynamo, which generated power for the projection lamp. In 1912, when the projector came to market, electricity was, if available at all, unreliable probably incompatible regarding voltage, frequency, or even whether it was AC or DC. The Pate Coq was self-contained. Over 15,000 units were sold from 1912 until 1920 for a price of around 1500 euros, counting for inflation. The end in 1920 came quickly, not only for the Pate Coq, but also for 28mm film. Better quality film stock allowed much cheaper formats like 9.5mm and 16mm take the amateur and home markets by storm. Storytelling evolved quickly, making all 28mm films look dated and uninteresting. Runtime also increased, which the projector with its tiny spindles couldn't handle without substantial modifications. And as films were usually rented and not owned, 28mm projectors became essentially useless when rental shops discontinued their unprofitable 28mm offerings. This Patekok projector has serial number 10 and is quite likely the oldest home cinema projector still in existence. The serial number is punched or engraved in many places. On the frame, crank, film transport mechanism, on the rear and, of course, prominently on the front of the shutter mechanism housing. Some parts seem to have been replaced over time, like this bracket with serial number 1181, this housing with serial number 1572, and the dynamo with 2901. It also has the larger lamp housing, which may also have been a retrofit. A good deal of the stickers and prints on the projector and base plate are also still present. As usual, the rewind mechanism had broken and was fixed in the past. Also, its axle has eaten into the metal. It must have been used often. But apart from that, the projector is in excellent mechanical condition. The magnets in the 12 volt generator have become weak and it doesn't produce enough current to light a traditional light bulb. However, it works with an LED. Nothing. 
nothing today fits into the old 9mm socket, but when you grind away the locking pins of a BA9S to GA4 adapter, it will work well enough and the lamp housing's range of adjustments allows a variety of LEDs to be used. But the strange thing about this putty cock is, and the nerdier audience may have already noticed, that it is not a 28mm but a 35mm projector. And it doesn't look like a conversion. Compared to 35mm, 28mm has a different width and a different perforation, as you can see here when compared to an actual 28mm part. Rollers and film transport mechanisms show no signs of being originally manufactured for a narrower film gauge and lower frame height. All parts look machine-made and purposefully 35mm. The internet says that some 35mm conversions have been done and the only image I could find was too small and the projector incomplete and in bad shape. However, 35mm conversions make no sense. Highly flammable celluloid was used for 35mm motion picture film until the 1950s. No one in their right minds would use it at home and the putty cock with its tiny light bulb is and was by no means a theater projector. There is also no way to get sound out of a putty cock. In the 1950s, when 35mm film finally became safe, silent film had been dead for two decades. But it's even worse, because while you cannot hear the sound, you will see it. The projector doesn't mask the area that has been used for optical sound since the 1920s. It's like it never knew this would exist. You can't even use safe 35mm reprints of silent movies, because they too have soundtracks on them meanwhile. The profession of silent film pianist died with talkies, like the profession of film explainer died with intertitles. Yes, Film Explainer was a job title once, and yes, they lobbied against intertitles. So, you can't play 28mm because it doesn't fit. You can't use old film stock because it will explode. And you can't use new films because they have sound. Why does this projector exist? At all, and in this build quality. Could it have been a bad management decision? When product managers don't know what they want, they want everything. So if 28mm doesn't catch on, let the customers have 35mm instead and let them deal with the consequences. The low serial number does allow speculation. If anyone knows the story behind 35mm putty cocks, please tell me.